Hello everyone, good day to all of you. Hope you're all doing well. Wanted to do a video today on Granite B, this rather exotic camouflage pattern all the way from the Republic of Korea. So pretty cool camo, I've been meaning to do this video for several years now because the sizing is rather, it's rather difficult to find one of these in the proper size. I'm gonna be doing a sort of a Brent 0331-esque camouflage test of this. So in other words, what I'm gonna do is I'll hide out somewhere. And I actually already recorded this segment earlier in the season back when it was a bit less green. As you can see right now, it's pretty green. It's the middle of summer. Uh, when I recorded the previous segment, it was more so the early spring. So I'm gonna show you that footage now and then we'll talk about how it did. So for my own thoughts on how that did as far as on the visible spectrum, I'd say it actually did really well. I was impressed expecting this to stand out because you can see that the predominant color on this is really much more of a spruce green. You can see right here, overall, this is a five color camouflage pattern. So the primary color is this spruce green, as you can see, but it is also broken up by these smaller, more olive drab splotches, have some pretty large brown here as well, has some smaller very light tan as well as black, albeit rather faded on this combat shirt, but if I back up, you can see on the pants here, it's much more of a proper vibrant color as it's supposed to look. And speaking of the colors on this, what I did also find interesting is if you look at this from more of a distance, I would say this actually looks more ranger green or even field gray. So I did compare this directly to a field gray hat that I have, for instance, and it looks almost identical as far as the overall palette. Now for all my practical camouflage videos, and I'm, I do say practical just because the last video I did on camo was on Blue Comish, which isn't, uh, it, it has its uses I'll say, but uh, it doesn't really perform the conventional uh, objective of camouflage, which is to conceal you of course. But in most of my videos, I do usually like to include a segment testing the NIR performance, in other words, under night vision of the camo pattern itself. The reason I'm not including it in this one is because I had to pick up all of these, uh, this whole set uh, used, so it doesn't perform the best under night vision, and I'm actually not going to be saying that that's a point against the pattern. This is actually also, it is legit 100% from Rock Army. But this stuff, since I had to get it secondhand, I don't think it was laundered correctly, especially this combat shirt. It, it reeks of this disgusting, just super cheap perfume. Even after washing this numerous times, I don't even remember how many at this point, it just never comes out fully. So I imagine that is having an impact on the NIR performance. Uh, for example, if you wash a lot of clothes incorrectly, uh, camouflage I should say, specifically, for example, a lot of whitening detergents are out there. Uh, similarly, I imagine whatever weird perfume is on here is probably screwing up the night vision performance of it as well. And I suppose that is a good point to segue into where can you pick up this stuff for yourself if you are interested in getting it. So there's a bit of an interesting, I guess you could say the little legal technicality regarding this stuff. So in the United States where I am, or really if you're anywhere except Korea proper, it's totally legal to have this. But the issue really comes from Korea itself. It's actually illegal for service members there when they're discharged to uh, sell or give this to someone else. It's supposed to be destroyed or just kept by them, or at least it used to be back at least when I was there last. So how I found this set, uh, actually, you know, despite it being illegal, it's pretty hard to track that. So there is a ton of this available on eBay, 100% uh, legit stuff. And I imagine, you know, there is some fakes out there too, but uh, you know, a lot of the real stuff coming from Southeast Asia. Uh, for example, all the stuff I ordered was from a, a surplus store in Thailand. And yeah, it took a little bit to get here, but all legit, all good. Uh, one thing on the sizing, so I was never able to find one of the shirts in my proper size, pretty much uh, because these are in East Asian sizes, they tend to have uh, just shorter in general, and I'm a rather tall height, so I could never find one that would fit me on the sleeves. Keep that in mind, is that all the sleeves are gonna be shorter than what you'd be uh, used to either for a European or US sizing. So uh, I always have this folded if you notice in pretty much all the footage, but uh, if I actually unfold this, you can see it, this does not 
really fit correctly. Obviously, it should be way down here, but I pretty much had to settle for either getting a gigantic size here or getting one that was, well, as it is. So I opted to just do this and uh, it kind of fits a little better, at least because I'm really thin because it's a, a combat shirt. Most of the Korean surplus you're going to find is essentially a copy of the US BDUs. If you look at the pants I have here, these are pretty much just like a, a light summer pant, but they follow a very standard BDU setup. So you got your large cargo pocket gusseted on each side, but you do actually have a proper zipper and then a, a button on the top closure. One minor detail I do just find a little interesting is all the buttons, at least all the surplus that I've seen from Korea is actually paint the buttons in the same sort of camo, a simplified version of it, of course, but just a rather interesting little detail, kind of cool. As far as the pants sizing, though, I haven't had any issues with that. That follows a pretty standard spec, so just check the sizing charts just to be sure, but uh, at least for the pants, yeah, these fit me perfectly. So thank you all for watching. I think this is a cool camo. It does actually work pretty well out here, as you saw, I would say, at least in the early spring. Right now, it wouldn't work as well. I'd say it's too green. Bit of a weird comparison to make, given the diplomatic situation between these two countries, but I'm a big fan of the JSDF camo, especially when it's more this season. Blends in incredibly well out here, especially. This is still not terrible, even in this season, but I'd say this generally does blend in a lot better when there's more dead branches everywhere, more dead trees, or just more general mud compared to much more greenery. Pretty recent camo as well. If I remember correctly, this was adopted in 2010, so kind of around the whole era when there was a lot of the digital camo craze worldwide, thanks to the abomination of UCP. But this is certainly a lot better than UCP, I would say. And overall, yeah, I just think it's a cool camo, probably because I am half Korean myself. So uh, hence the old name of the channel, if you've been around here long enough to remember that one. So thank you all for watching. If you have any other questions on this camo or on anything else, then by all means, feel free to leave those in the comments below and any questions I'll do my best to get back to you. Again, appreciate you all for watching. Take care and see you all in the next one. See you then. Just setting up to record and I find this pretty funny. I usually hunt these guys. It's obviously not hunting season right now. That's why I didn't shoot at him. But uh, I've been setting up my camera for at least 10 minutes now and getting everything ready. He hasn't moved. He's been there since I got here. So very cool, rough grouse. I can see you clearly. He's tilting his head. He's just, he started over there. He's just kind of tiptoed and uh, I'm shocked he hasn't taken off yet. Anyway, back to setting up.